You know those cults of demon worshippers who do finally manage to summon a demon lord, but it's like Grast or Faz Urblu or something? So it's not that bad, mostly just bad for them, right? Well, this is not one of those demon lords. There are many demon lords and a lesser but quite large number of demon princes, the definition of which is hazy at best, but one demon lord who rules over a region of the abyss called the Writhing Realm is notable in that it is one of the original demons called forth into the elemental planes by the mad god Tharizdun. Basically, when the god of entropy's worst nightmare fever dream manifested and became real as he pulled a rod of pure, condensed evil out of his massive divine essence, trying to escape a reality that should not exist. For more on that, watch my video on the forbidden secrets of Dungeons and Dragons. The original demon invaders are called the Oberith. Most of them look like something that escaped from the Far Realm. Very few look anything like a humanoid, and most of them, or all of them, can cause a mortal being to go insane just from looking at them directly and making the fatal mistake of trying to combine the signals coming from their eyes into any logical sense because, well, Oberith don't belong in reality, they really are figments of imagination made real and much like dreams can be wholly nonsensical but have their own logic when you're actually asleep and in the dream. The Oberith operate in a similar state of madness that makes sense to them and some demented part of Tharazdun's mind but drive anyone else insane and also tends to disrupt reality around them just by their existence. This madness can take many forms, it's pretty specific, as is the case for the demon lord we're going to learn about today. Its name is Ugudink, the squirming king. Although lord and king are gendered terms and Ugudink doesn't have a gender, or an agenda for that matter, Ugudink has the form of an impossibly large worm, a bit like the sandworms of the Dune movies, but so much more extensive and so much more terrible when it bursts out of the ground and starts engulfing things that should be far too large to be considered food by anything. You know, like castles, mountains, small moons, fleets of ships, lakes, quaint rural villages, tarasks, ancient red dragons, whole armies, significant suburbs of huge metropolitan cities, that sort of thing. Ugadink is not measured in feet, it's measured in miles, and its body is a number of entire encounter locations. However, the tip of Ugadink is where its mouth is located, a complex multi-jawed structure that opens out something like the petals of a huge carnivorous flower with various massive hooked tentacles made of powerful muscle that can tear apart a castle like it was made of sand. The mouth part's the only part of Ugadink that can be destroyed. It takes some very potent magic, but it can be done. Even if the first 100 of of its body is vaporized, the demon lord will retract it to the writhing realm of the abyss and gradually regenerate it. In theory, destroying the entire 177th layer of the abyss will also destroy Ugadink, but otherwise, nothing in the multiverse has managed to do more than injure it temporarily up to this point. So it is safe to say that Ugadink is more like an extension of a subplane of the abyss, a manifestation of the abyss that enjoys simply eating reality. You may find the occasional cultists of this demon lord from time to time, they are exactly the same sort of lunatic that climbs clock towers and just shoots as many people with crossbow bolts or magic missile wands before someone takes them out, sooner rather than later. Hopefully, in the case of summoning Ugadink, it's more like strapping a nuclear warhead to their body and setting it off while standing ground zero in the place that they hate more than life itself. So there are no cults of Ugadink. And when those who hunt cultists and make a point of destroying any evidence of demon summoning and devil packs do run across any information on an entity like Ugadink, they will go to some level of extreme destruction to wipe out anyone or anything that has any mention of it at all. There may be some very evil masterminds who can set up some little nihilistic death cult in a strategic location and then when the time is right, gift that cult the information and foul tomes of demon lore that bring Ugadink briefly into the world. But even doing so far, far away from where they are safely hiding is risky, as Ugadink 
could wipe out an entire planet if nothing manages to stop it in time, which has happened more than a few times, sad to say. So much like Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars, the wise mastermind plays both sides in that little drama, setting up the nihilistic cults to release incredibly catastrophic demonic destruction and they'll also be the benefactor to some school of abjuration wizards or the militant arm of a powerful church sending a warning timed just right so that they are not there to prevent the summoning of Ukadink but are there to hopefully put a stop to the demon lord's maelstrom of mayhem before it engulfs and literally consumes the whole world. Fighting Ugadink is a ridiculous proposition for your average adventuring group. Its sheer size is simply off the scale of something that all but the epic levels of magic can hurt. Add to this to the fact that Ugadink spontaneously emanates spell-like effects such as fear and fly at will, the insanity aspect of the symbol spell, and a ninth level very nasty insect swarm called Creeping Doom three times per day, as well as once per day being able to imprison a being as per the ninth level imprisonment spell, and cause an earthquake as per the eighth level evocation spell. This is on top of being able to do things like roll to the side a bit and crush a wizard tower, medium sized church or entire side of a town wall without much effort. Adventurers facing an actual Ugadink level event better have some artifact level super weapon on hand and they better be very good at teleporting into a zone of absolute shitstorm destruction, setting the thing off on a short timer and getting the hell out of there as quickly as possible or they will die in any number of different ways. I mentioned the insanity that mortal beings suffer when faced with Oberith demons. Ugadinx takes a very particular form and it's a very potent doom that is quite hard to avoid. According to Dragon Magazine issue 359, published in September 2007, an incre creature within 120 feet that observes Ugadink must make a wisdom saving throw of fairly extreme difficulty. A failure in that save indicates the victim realizes Ugadink can erupt from any earthly surface at any time, as long as the victim is in contact with the ground or even any structure attached to the ground. They have disadvantage on all attacks, skill or initiative checks and saving throws. While afflicted, they're also terrified of any monsters that they fight that have a burrowing speed. As soon as combat with such a creature starts, they must make a wisdom saving throw. Again, a difficult save for the level and the creature's uh, challenge rating. If they fail, they become so frightened they can't even flee the area. They are paralyzed with fear and can't make any move action for up to six rounds though they do get a new saving throw at the start of each of those rounds. This fear doesn't occur for chaotic evil creatures from other planes of existence, nor does it influence the mind of celestial beings, but any other creature can be affected by it. This is toned down a lot, considering I've adapted it for 5th edition D&D. In earlier editions, this kind of phobia is permanent unless cured by powerful magic or years of intensive therapy, I guess. Oh, and it's almost a certainty that non-player characters who are afflicted by this form of insanity will eventually, willingly, fling themselves into the maw of some gigantic creature, ending their torment forever. The bite of Ugadink is ridiculously dangerous and comes down to getting the hell out of the way or being transported to an encounter location inside the Demon Lord, taking significant falling and bludgeoning damage and then fighting stomach parasites the size of purple worms in a lake of churning acid and a landscape of toxic semi-digested scum. The air so revolting that breathing is impossible without some mundane or magical assistance. The lake of acid is also the source of the secondary ranged attack of the Ukadink, a 600 foot long, 20 foot wide line of acid that should by all rights be impossible for an adventurer to dodge out of the way from, but it does allow a dexterity saving throw for half of the 20 d10 acid damage it unleashes. Thankfully, it can only spew this massive torrent of acid once every 10 combat rounds. You can imagine the destruction this could cause to the environment around the Demon Lord though. The rest of Ugadink's traits and combat methods are very similar to a purple worm, except replace the tail stinger description and damage type with a crushing bludgeoning slam attack from a brush with its massive bulk, or simply a chunk of debris that is flung from its maw at any given moment. Ugadink is so impossibly immense that the length of its body can sometimes be seen in the distance coiling around mountain peaks. It is not, as far as I know, capable of thrusting its head out of a planet's atmosphere to attack objects in very close orbit, but it's possible it could do that on the surface of a small moon with very low gravity. 
Worm-like monsters and invertebrate Oberith demons are commonly found near Ugadink, and a swarm of them ravaging an area is a clear portent of the Demon Lord's sudden arrival at any moment. They will also linger in an area long after the Demon Lord is gone, feasting on the crumbs it leaves in its wake. Even a near summons that fails at the last minute can result in a violent uprising of the landscape that can cause widespread destruction for miles, and worms of all kinds will be pretty damn feisty for quite a while. The Writhing Realm, the 177th layer of their buffs that was discovered and catalogued, is home to Ugadink. The entire layer is underground, consisting of endless tunnels and caverns left behind by the Demon Lord's endless burrowing. It's possible to run into one of the coils of the immense worm, a massive wall blocking the way through the tunnels. But the head end of Ugadink is usually located on some other plane of existence, and this has led to theories that Ugadink may actually be a subplane of the 177th layer, and that his entire body is nothing but a feeding tendril that extends from un some unknown deeper realm into the abyss through an undiscovered portal. Evidence for this is supported by a permanent portal in the abyssal layer called Hollow's Heart, the layer that's ruled by Fraz Urblu. It forms a structure called the Spiral of Ugadink and is particularly vexing for Fraz Urblu as the rest of the layer is highly mutable according to the Demon Lord's will. So the Spiral is kind of like a damaged blotch on a computer screen that really stands out sometimes. So far, Fraz Urblu has been unable to close the portal or do anything to stop Ugadink from feeding on the layer whenever it pleases, which makes the Demon Lord of Deception kind of a laughing stock amongst the other Demon Princes. Like he's got a worm infection. Ugadink has seen action in the Eternal Blood War many, many times. His arrival in the Maelstrom of Battle is a very good indicator that an entire region of the multiverse is so infested with demonic energy that it is about to effectively separate from reality and become another layer of the Abyss. The easiest way to view this is by comparison to the way elementals work. Imagine someone summoning legions and legions of Earth elementals into an asteroid, and each of those elementals could make a body for itself out of the rock of the asteroid. Also, each of those rock elementals can feed on and consume the energy of the other elementals, growing in size and power, infusing more asteroid rock to create a larger and larger body. Eventually, there is no more asteroid. There is only one gigantic Earth Elemental Lord covered in teeming masses of lesser elementals swarming over it and through it like parasites and vermin. Now you know how demonic energy works and what the Abyss actually is. I'll let that sink in for a while. Thanks for listening. As always, I'll be back with more for you very soon.